I'm David Mason. I'm the director of public health for the town of Sandwich, and we've been putting together a series of informational videos for you to, to discuss protecting the town of Sandwich water resources. And with us today, we have Ed Leonard, who is the uh, project engineer with Wright Pierce, who has been working with the town of Sandwich on the development of the Comprehensive Water Resource Management Plan, or the CWRMP. Uh, just for information, the CWRMP is to vol uh, volume one and an appendix associated with it, which you can find on the Town of Sandwich website. So we're going, we'll have a discussion about what is the CWRMP and, and what's within these volumes. What do we have in? Okay. Uh, thanks for having me here today, Dave. Um, the CWRMP is a townwide plan which is focused on clean water. Uh, what we do when we develop these plans is we analyze we, we go through a process of analyzing the needs that the town has, identifying alternatives and solutions to address those needs, develop a recommended approach to address those needs from the various alternatives we looked at, and then develop a schedule and a funding approach to complete the plan. Um, for this plan, we came up with a three-phase plan spread out over 40 to 60 years. Very good. And as far as the development of this plan, it, it wasn't just uh, yourself. It involved the Water Quality Advisory Committee, and the Water Quality Advisory Committee was composed of the Selectmen, the Conservation Commission, uh, representatives from the Selectmen, the Conservation Commission, the Board of Health, uh, the Planning Board, mm -hmm. uh, and some at-large public, you know, is, is in, is public citizens that wanted to participate in this process. So it correct. is and that was that was probably 30 or so meetings over the past six years. Right, correct. And it has been a long time in the making. And these the individuals of the Water Quality Advisory Committee were looking at a plan that did not focus on infrastructure. They they looked at it at uh, they looked at a plan that was uh, broken into phases and but utilized other methods of dealing, uh, of protecting our water resources. And uh, one as that's outlined in this plan, well, what, you know, so what's, what's in the plan? What are we looking to protect? Yeah, I think one, one point you just made that's important to recognize is the advisory committee said from the beginning, the plan needs to impact the fewest number of properties as possible in terms of uh, changing how wastewater management occurred. So that was an important premise from the beginning. Uh, the plan itself addresses water quality needs in a handful of categories. So it's uh, coastal estuary protection. Sandwich has a number of estuaries that uh, activities on the land impact. Some of those are on the north side of town, and some of those are actually in other towns on the south side of the Cape. Um, but San activities in Sandwich do impact those estuaries on the south side of the Cape. Um, the plan also addresses freshwater pond protection. Sandwich has 12 large, high-quality ponds that are used recreationally. Uh, this plan addresses that. Uh, we looked at public and private drinking water protection. There are uh, obviously wells, public, public water supply wells that need to be protected, and, and homeowners that have their own wells. Uh, there, there are some parts of town where uh, nitrate concentrations are increasing in those wells. Uh, the plan also looked at uh, sanitary and aesthetic issues in the historic village and, and the village parts of town where there are poorly drained soils, where septic systems have had a tendency to fail in the past or and have resulted in mounded systems and tight tanks. Uh, we focused on targeted economic development that was outlined in the local comprehensive plan um, that the town's put a lot of effort into in 2009 and has been working on diligently over the past 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, the school wastewater treatment systems. The, the town has four schools that each have their own treatment system and those uh, renovation or elimination of those systems and connecting to public infrastructure were part of this plan. So, and that's an important component too because I've, I spoke to this in a previous 
discussion as far as the schools. Uh, the age of those plants uh, is an issue based on uh, maintenance. They're, bec they're becoming costly to maintain. Uh, two, that uh, the State Department of Environmental Protection is looking at uh, or requiring tertiary treatment associated with those plants, which it means a, a cleaner discharge from those. And But what we're seeing in all the school treatment plants is the aging out and the, just the need to to do something and economically it doesn't make sense to do something individually it makes more sense to do something in a combined situation the uh, so as far as in the in the report you know it, it addresses as you said it, you know we'll break it down as far as water line expansion uh, pond protection, dealing with runoff and drainage, uh, deals with groundwater protection, the protection of our water supply, and addressing uh, wastewater issues uh, as far as waste development of wastewater infrastructure to deal with aesthetic issues and economic issues to allow for economic development. Uh, as far as the, you mentioned that the, the plan is in phased over a number of years, what is in that phase one that we'll sure. be looking at? So phase one uh, has uh, focuses on a couple of key points. One is some, some wastewater infrastructure in town. Uh, the proposed plan has two small treatment plants, one located uh, at the end of the Sandwich Industrial Park and the other located near the marina. Um, they would each have a small collection system, treatment plant, and disposal facilities associated with them. Uh, of the schools, Forestdale School and Oak Ridge School would be connected to the, to the new treatment plant at the Sandwich Industrial Park, and the high school plant would be upgraded. Um, in terms of water infrastructure, uh, the portion, the Portions of East Sandwich are where the town has been seeing increasing con nitrate concentrations in private wells. And so the water main extensions would run from the existing Sandwich Water District infrastructure to several areas in East Sandwich to, to put those homes on public water. Uh, and lastly uh, would be to implement some stormwater improve infrastructure improvements to clean up the stormwater uh, in many cases before it discharges directly into some of the freshwater ponds. Um, uh, the other non-infrastructure piece that's part of phase one is the administrative and technical elements of the plan uh, from some additional staff in order to manage the overall water quality program, to do monitoring of ponds, uh, to coordinate with other municipalities in the watersheds that Sandwich shares, um, and, and to, to manage the, uh, just the overall program itself. So that's, that's, those are the major elements of phase one. And, and an important component of this too is it's pointed out in there that it's an adaptive plan too because over time things change. So there's, there's the ability to adapt to what changes we're seeing for, for responding to protecting our water resources. Correct. That's a, that's a major premise of, of uh, the, the Cape Cod Commission and the Mass Department of Environmental Protection's overall program on Cape Cod is that uh, we don't have 100% of the answers today, but we, we have enough inf information to know that we need to start acting now. Um, and this plan is phase one of multiple plans that the town will have the ability to, to monitor and then adjust its course to hopefully save money in the longer term in essentially 20-year increments or municipal, municipal financing increments. So, so Ed, we've talked about uh, what the CWRMP is, uh, the components of it, the, and the f phase one of it. Um, you know, I think people will say, and we've talked about uh, how, to, how to finance this. You know, we've had a conversation with uh, Bud Dunham, the town administrator, how to finance this. And the, uh, there'll be some people that will say, well, what happens if we don't do this? I mean, so, so what, what are the choices here? You know, we have the CWRMP, we can say, uh, we don't want to do this, but what, what happens if we don't do this? What's, what's your experience with sure. that? Um, so from, from a, the perspective of water quality in Sandwich, 
Um, Sandwich contributes to some of the south-facing embayments, which are really past the tipping point in terms of uh, deteriorating quality. Uh, and Sandwich has a role to play in helping fix that. Uh, in terms of the ponds in Sandwich, the, some of the ponds are, are at the tipping point, and it would be terrible to see those ponds go to the point where they have consistent algae blooms or fit issues with fish kills and things like that. Um, and from a drinking water perspective, uh, it's always important to, to protect your public water supply. So th there's some urgency in just protecting Sandwich's water resources. From a bigger picture perspective, there you, you probably recall a few years ago that there was a lawsuit filed by the Conservation Law Foundation yep. against EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and Mass Department of Environmental Protection uh, for not requiring the Cape to get serious about uh, nitrogen pollution or, or, or uh, water resource issues. Um, there was a settlement agreement that came out of that where the courts basically assigned Mass DEP and the Cape Cod Commission with developing a plan. And so there are outside entities, regulatory agencies that are interested in the Cape making action. Uh, there are uh, many of the other towns on the Cape are struggling with the same issue and so Sandwich isn't alone in that regard. Uh, and towns are starting to make progress. Some towns already have infrastructure and other towns have none. Um, but but momentum is gathering and, and towns are beginning to make progress. So this is good timing for Sandwich to stay ahead of any regulatory requirements that may come from EPA or DEP. All right, so is, is that the potential you know, legal consequences associated with the Conservation Law Foundation, DEP, EPA? I mean, just by example, a simple example is uh, those those residents uh, in areas where they flush the toilet and, the, and it goes down to the groundwater and the groundwater flows to the southern embayments like Three Bays in Bonstable or Pompanesset Bay in Mashpee or Wakoit Bay in Falmouth, you know, we, our, our wastewater nutrient loading is impacting those areas in which those to individual towns each have to deal with what's occurring and they're being told the same thing by the EPA, DEP, and Conservation Law Foundation. I mean, so really, potentially, we could have those towns knocking on our door saying, you're not doing enough and holding us responsible also. I mean, is that potential? That's true. I mean, that's, they, they would look at that as sandwich is part of the, of the problem and needs to be part of the solution. So, so, you know, when we talk about why we need to do this, that's, you know, the, the really simple thing is, is uh, we need, you know, we need to address the issues with our abutting communities and to deal with uh, federal, federal agencies also. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Ed. And again, uh, I, uh, my name is David Mason. I'm the Director of Public Health, and we are putting together a series of information videos for you so that you can have an understanding of what the CWRMP is and how we finance that. And we'll be having additional videos coming, uh, coming for you so you can educate yourself. And again, the CWRMP is on the town's website and has a lot of information in it. And we're trying to break it down for you to simplify what the intent is. Thank you.